man down! I'm not the one to fear, Prime. There is a darkness coming. That is a scene from Transformers Rise of the Beasts and the latest installment of the film franchise. It opens today. And so for more on this, let's bring in CBC News senior entertainment reporter Eli Glasner. Okay, so for me, when I see anything to do with Transformers, I remember playing with them with my sister when we were kids. What kind of nostalgia do you have here? And I love this. He brought them on set. So Amazing. It's not nostalgia for me, Arthi, because I'm still actively participating in it. <laughs> so, Fair. I mean, like, these are a couple of my friends. This is uh, Optimus. This is Perceptor. It's a microscope. I mean, look, I started with me uh, just buying the treasured toys of my youth, and then I never really stopped. I think we have a little B-roll from my uh, shelf at home. My name is Eli Glasner. I am a collector. So that is just few of the gadgets. Look, these are like, you know, fidget toys for grown-ups. Like, you pick them up, you turn a flap, you pull a leg, you put down the head, and now it was a fire truck, and now it's a robot. Now, the interesting thing is you look at that, a lot of the collecting and, co you know, the community of Transformer collectors and fans, it really revolves around the classic toys, the characters and cartoons that we grew up with, because, you know, they're, they're charming and they're the ones we remember. Now, also it's because they're very different than the Michael Bay movie. So let's take a look at that because you remember like, yeah, when they first started with Shia LaBeouf and Megan Fox, it was like a fun screwball comedy with uh, explosions and robots, but you had to look past the rampant sexism and surprisingly aggressive military propaganda. And as the movies continued with three, four and five, there's Mark Wahlberg. It just became like a war on our senses. The movies got louder and dumber and louder and dumber until the last one, which was 2017's The Last Night, which we're watching right now. Okay, so if we're talking about a progression of louder yeah. and dumber, yes. as you say, where does this one then fit in on that spectrum? So a really interesting thing happened a couple years ago. There was a movie called Bumblebee. It was set in the 1980s. It starred Haley Steinfeld. It was like a John Hughes movie, but about a girl and a big yellow robot who wanted to go home. It was kind of sweet and it was funny. And like I said, it was set in the 80s, which brings us to now and Rise of the Beast. This is set in 94 and we are in Brooklyn, New York. And that is where we meet Noah. Noah is a former soldier. Now he's just struggling, trying to take care of his younger brother who's sick. And so he's at, you know, difficult place. He finds himself hot wiring a Porsche because it's a Transformer movie. The Porsche wakes up, takes him on a merry little chase with the police and then spits him out on the floor of a warehouse. Let's take a look. Back up. Oh, I thought we were boys. You want it? Come and get it. You brought a human here. I'm nobody. I ain't even seen nothing. I'm not even seeing anything right now. All right, he is not nobody. That's Anthony Ramos. Maybe you know him from Hamilton. We had the amazing Peter Cullen, Canadian voice actor. You cannot do Optimus the talking truck without Peter Cullen. But the beginning, the Porsche is Mirage. And Mirage is voiced by Pete Davidson. And I don't know how to tell you this. It's the best thing that Pete has done in years. Like, I, I find <laughs> Davidson to be a little much. You just saw him there. But when he's just the voice and giving us this Autobot with attitude, he's very funny. He was actually doing improv in the voice booth. And it works. Like, it actually gives this uh, Autobot Mirage a nice personality. Now, Optimus... Our friend was not making jokes because he's in a sad place. They're stuck on Earth. He's frustrated. Turns out there's a magic key, the trans warp key, which could bring them home to Cybertron. It could also bring a planet munching entity known as Unicron to Earth. And, well, that would be bad. Take a look. This is not our war. Optimus, we must trust each other to protect the home we all share. How big can this guy be? Uh, he eats planets, so like way bigger than a planet. So in the middle of that clip, you might have missed it, the voice of Oscar winner Michelle Yeoh. What better way to celebrate your Oscar win than 
becoming a robotic uh, bird thing called the Air Razor. So that is part of the many Autobots. It turns out that Noah and Dominic uh, Fishback, she shows up as an anthropologist. They realize this magic key has another part in Lima, Peru. So off we go to Machu Picchu to find this key. And that's where we also find another group of metallic aliens who've been hiding in the jungle. They are known as the Maximals. What could possibly be better than Peter Cullen as Optimus Prime? And that would be Ron Hellboy Perlman as Optimus Primal. Prepare yourself for the Robo Gorilla. Who are you? Why are you hunting for the king? Yo, Donkey Kong, stay away from my friends. Um, Rush! Don't worry, you boys got this. Uh -oh. Stranger danger! Stranger danger! Hey, 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 hey! There he is, isn't he adorable? That is Rhinox, the robotic rhinoceros. The stranger the transformation, the more I'm endeared to them. And you know, of course, with all of these films, and I know you'll agree with me, we've had this conversation before. I mean, the dialogue is not really what it's about. <laughs> no, and no. you could kind of get that there. Yeah. It's very basic. Um, but you know, you've got robot rhinos, Ron Perlman. Yep. Uh, you talk about how the Michael Bay movies tend to be a little bit of a excessive yeah but you I don't know you don't seem too disappointed you <laughs> because myself like the director of this Stephen Capel Jr I grew up on these shows including from the 90s Beast Wars and that's why like I could try and explain why there's robotic gorilla I'm not going to there was Beast Wars now we have Beast Wars the movie that's basically what is happening but what is great that you have this new director Stephen Capel Jr this is the guy who directed Creed 2 and now he's giving us a new flavor to this franchise he's giving us you know humans who are actually grounded, not some stoic, unstoppable s soldier, just a guy trying to survive, trying to stay alive, like Anthony Ramos and Dominique Fishback. And to complement that, as I said, it's set in the 90s in Brooklyn. This is a Transformers film with needle drops. Let me give you a taste of the bops the beasts bring. Take a look. We beat to rap what key beat to lock, but I'm cool like that. 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 I'm cool. From giving us an Optimus Prime that's actually got a little more depth to his metallic soul to a soundtrack with Wu Tang, with Diggable Planets and LL Cool J, this is the overhaul that the Transformers needed. If you know your Megatrons from your Optimus Primes and you're a fan, you will leave giddy like I did. If you don't, stay far away. But if you do, then I enjoyed it. I'm giving it, well, let's take a look. I think we have another special graphic. Oh, look at that. <laughs> Four stars out of five. And frankly, if you don't even want to see it, buy the soundtrack. <laughs> yeah, okay. Exactly. Thanks, Eli. That's Eli Glasner.